abdominal aorta sketch, we explored the branching mine shafts, representing the branches off the aorta. But one that we encountered was all sealed up. Sealed. As in, the celiac trunk. So now let's see what's on the other side, and why it's sealed. The celiac trunk, also called the celiac artery, is the first anterior branch of the aorta coming off at the level of T12, or sometimes closer to L1. So check out the T-hammer and the boards forming a 12 and the L1-shaped shadow. Recall that the three anterior branches off the abdominal aorta are the ones supplying the majority of GI structures in the abdomen, grouped by their embryological origins. The celiac trunk supplies the structures derived from the foregut, meaning the GI tract from the distal esophagus to the second part of the duodenum, including the stomach, as well as the organs derived from the foregut, the liver, pancreas, and gallbladder. You can recall foregut by looking at our foreman sealing up the shaft. It also supplies the spleen, but importantly, the spleen is not embryologically from the endoderm like the foregut, but rather the mesoderm. This makes the spleen a unique organ in that its blood supply has different embryological origins than the organ itself. Speaking of unique, that spleen ruby sure looks expansive, so it makes sense that they'd want to seal up this cavern to guard it from that beautiful four-eyed tentacle monster in the aorta mine shaft. As it leaves the aorta, the celiac trunk immediately splits into its three branches. The left gastric artery, the common hepatic artery, and the splenic artery, shown here by these three pipes supplying the structures in this cavern. These vessels and their branches are complex, and even interconnect with each other at points called anastomoses. So, we'll take them on one by one, but look out for where they work cooperatively with each other. The left gastric artery is the easiest to start with. It turns as it comes off the trunk to run along and supply the proximal part of the lesser curvature of the stomach, like this very small, or one could say lesser, curve over this rat nest. Because it runs along the lesser curvature, the left gastric artery is vulnerable to hemorrhage from a gastric ulcer on the lesser curve, penetrating through the wall and into the artery, like this rat gnawing into the pipe. The distal part of the lesser curvature is supplied by the right gastric artery, and these two meet in the middle as an anastomosis. But this is just a little foreshadowing. We'll come back to the right gastric artery and its origins a bit later, 